Hey everybody, what's up? It's Intel. Uh, I want to show you an invention called Cheap Password that I made. It'll help you if you're trying to do things like puzzle rooms or unlocking doors, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, I also want to show you some of the implementations I've been seeing that are using state machines and why I don't particularly like those. Uh, so let's let's get into it here. All right. So this is what I'm talking about when I say a, a state machine uh, sequence, right? So basically you have your uh, sequence that you have to hit here and the buttons down here and then the reset conditions in the bottom row. So the password for this one is 142, right? So I hit 142 and I got it right. And if I get like 12, then it just resets itself, okay? So some of the problems with this, um, this is hard-coded, the sequence. You can't change it dynamically, right? If you want to actually change the password for this, you have to rewire the entire thing. So that may not be too much a problem for you, but if you want your game to be, like, more dynamic, like doing interesting things like, for example, like having it randomly set or being able to rapidly reconfigure this, such as changing a, changing a variable, you know, like reconfiguring an input, um, this is not going to work for you. Also, to scale this out, it's very costly, right? You're going to have to keep adding chips for every new position that you want. And if you wanted to have more numbers than just four, you'd obviously have to have a button for each of those numbers. Um, buttons are the big enemy here. Buttons are super expensive. Buttons are like two-thirds of a percent of bank, so they're like point. 0.6 or 0.66 somewhere around there something like that so um this is okay for like a one-time setup and, and don't get me wrong like state machines are actually kind of nice because they're easy to follow right um it, it kind of really shows you clearly what the flow is if i hit this button then it moves to the next position right um the real advantage of state machines in, in my opinion or at least one of the advantages besides they're being easy to read is the fact that you can control multiple values where before you'd have to use like a, like a compare for each one and then send all that stuff off to other places. So that's kind of nice here. By being in this, you just get so much information. You get the fact that you entered the state, you're in the state, and you can set three values, right? Um, so yeah, so that's the existing system. They're, they're not terrible, but um, implementing something like this, I think, is close to around 4% ink. And the solution I'm going to show you will actually do a lot more for about half the ink cost for like 2% ink, right? So let's, let's move on to that system. Okay, so this is the invention that I made called Cheap Password. Now, when you get it in the invention store, it just comes with the, the chip here in the center, um, and that chip costs 0.7 ink, okay? So not even 1%. And then if you want to add the, the buttons and stuff to it, I think you get to like 2.2% ink, and technically you don't need a button on reset, but it's available if you want to have some type of condition to, uh, to make that reset itself, okay? So the way that this works, essentially, is it's building up a sequence. And at the very end of this video, because I know not everybody is quite as interested in circuits as I am, I'll actually crack this thing open and show you how it works. But it's, it's really cheap. It's only nine chips on the inside. Um, so what this does is it allows you to do a password match, like a, a, a sequence match, on a string of digits up to nine digits long, and you can use all nine digits, right? Now, how am I getting nine digits without using a button for every single one, right? So what this does, every time I press this number button, it's changing the input there, and it's, it's just cycling, right? So I can just cycle this as many times as I want. So right now it's on seven. And then when I hit cat, which means concatenate, it adds it into the sequence. So right now, seven is the first number in our sequence. So now I can put like four. Now our sequence is seven, four. Let me see if you can actually see that. Let's get in nice and close there. Okay. There we go. So now I'm going to add in another number. Seven. We got a 747. Three. You get the idea. I can keep building out that sequence. Okay. Now, the number I'm feeding in here, the key, is the password. So obviously I'm, I'm way past that, so that's not going to work. So let's just hit the cat button a bunch of times, or actually I'll just hit the reset button. There we go, reset it. So the reason I don't have it hard-coded where if you go over that, that's up to you. Um, if you want to check if the sequence is higher than your key, then you can reset it. If not, it won't do anything. Okay. Um, so let's see what it looks like when I actually get the sequence correct. So the sequence is 8-8. Eight, eight, so Eight. Eight. There you go, 88. I got a ding, it was happy, and it cleared the whole board, right? Now, let's see what happens if I um, put too many values in here, right? So, I got a one. I'm just going to blow this thing up, basically. 
Okay, once it rolls over, it basically resets itself. So it detects a, a negative value. So there is some uh, some um, some error checking in this, okay? So, so some neat things about this. First of all, it's cheap. Second of all, um, this being configurable, this key here, you could change this very quickly. So if you want to change the password on this, I can just take out my maker pen and say, hey, 88, your value now is going to be 221, okay? So now if I want to try it out, I can do 2, 2, 1, there you go. So if you tried to do that with this over here, this mess, you'd be rewiring the entire thing, right? Not fun. With this, it's just as simple as configuring uh, that key. Now, let's look at a other interesting application of that, right? So this circuit right here, what this does, when you hit push me, there's some randomizers here. And then the output of these is being multiplied. This isn't being multiplied by anything. This one's being multiplied by 100. And this one's being multiplied by 10,000. So the purpose of that is to get three two-digit segments and then combine them all, right? So when I push this, I got 6, 5, 8, 7, and 76, okay? And put that all together, you got 6, 5, 8, 7, 7, 6. Okay, so great. I made a really big number. What's, what's the point of doing that? Well, if you wanted to see if somebody made it to a particular area in your room, right, you could have a sign that outputs the 6, 5 in one place the 8, 7 in another place, and the 7, 6 in the third place. And now, instead of going and configuring my uh, cheap password invention, we can just wire this. Okay, I'm going to wire this over to the key. Okay, so now, remember this number. It's You know, that's really big. I'm going to get a different one. Ugh. Okay, 45190. Okay. So let's do this over here. Okay, so we got four, five, one, nine, zero. Oh, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> That's okay, I can roll it over. There we go. Ding. So, how cool is that? We can do this on, like, game start, so it'll be a different value every time, um, or we can just leave it that we want to be able to uh, redo the thing manually with the key. You get a lot more functionality out of this, and it's basically, like I said, half the ink of something like this. Now, let's say you're like, you know, this is cool, but I think this button thing is confusing, um, and you know what, that may be a benefit to you if you're trying to make a puzzle so it's not quite as obvious as having a keypad, they have to kind of figure it out, okay? But let's say you really wanted a keypad. Let's say you're like, listen, I really want to have numbers one, two, three, and four, right? That is not that hard to do with this, right? So basically, I've taken the existing circuit here, and I've added um, a small keypad to this, okay? Now, it only does one through four, but again, you, you really probably don't want to do <laughs> one through nine because it's it's just... Those 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 uh, buttons are just way too expensive. You're you're gonna blow through like six percent of your ink just just to make a stupid nine-digit keypad. Okay, so what I've done here is I basically just I want the value that comes out of these um, to be the number on the button, right? So one doesn't get multiplied by anything. Two gets multiplied by two. Three gets multiplied by three, and four gets multiplied by four. And then we add those all up, and then the output is wired to the concat and the input. Right? So the key on this one, it's going to be kind of hard for you to see, is 42431. Right? So if I want to do this, I do 42431. There you go. So, and this thing, I think you can get it down to maybe like 3.8% ink. So still cheaper than this guy, and it does a nine digit sequence where this does. Right now, it does a four-digit sequence, and if you wanted to blow this up to be a nine-digit sequence, you'd have to have, add all the new states, all the new ore chips down there to reset it, and it's really ugly because it's, like I said, it's it's hard-coded. Okay, so uh, let's take a look inside at this thing because it's it's actually not too complicated. Like I said, it's, it's only nine chips, all right? So I'm going to move these back a little bit so you can see better. All right, and let's edit this. Actually, not, that's really hard to see on the camera, so I'm going to actually unpack this thing. Unpack circuit board. 
Let's move it up a little. Alright. Okay. A lot of wires, but let's let's walk through it. It's it's not too bad, okay? This first uh, row up here, this is all about getting your current value. Okay, the, the input, the one that the player's clicking, they're clicking all to make it roll over, say like one, two, three, four. Oh, I want the four. That's that's your input, right? So this chip is just a, a combinator. It's a, called a ring store. You can see that that's looped back there, okay? All that's doing is it lets us count. So every time the person clicks the button, it counts up. So that's how we get that one, two, three, four, right? Um, and this is another combinator in the modulo mode. Um, what modulo means a uh, remainder division. So it's just dividing by 10. So what this means is if somebody decides to click the thing 22 times, um, you're just going to get two out of it, right? So it's, it's just making sure that the input is, is scrubbed, okay? So that value comes into this combinator where it's being combined with the rest of the sequence, right? So we'll get down to that. But basically all this does is says, what's, what's the input, right? Now, once you have uh, your input there, it's always flowing through to this chip down here, this compare, and that acts like a gate, okay? And the gate lets the value go through when you hit that cat button, right? So let's say we have like a value 7 in here, right? And we hit the cat button. So 7 is going to go through to this random chip, and don't worry about the OR in here, because that when that 7 value comes through, it's going through the OR and the value is being saved in here. But basically what this OR is, is it allows me to reset the random chip, okay? So it's either going to put a value in here, right, if we if we hit the cat, or when it hits a reset condition, it's going to wipe this out. So this is where it's storing storing the sequence, right? And then once that 7 comes through here, it's getting multiplied by 10, so it immediately bumps it up to 70, right? And then that is getting fed back through to this combinator. So if I now go put a number, another number in, like 3, it's going to be adding the 3 and the 70. That's how it starts building your sequence. So now I went from 7 to 3, that's 73, and then if I had a 4, it becomes 7, 3, 4. So this whole sequence just keeps going and building up a longer and longer number string. And it's nice because you're not using a chip per digit. You're using basically a chip to store the sequence and just keep adding to that, okay? And that's pretty much the whole guts of this thing. The only other chips that we have in here is a reset that checks when we hit a negative number down here. And this is the equal that gives you the little ping, that little sound that says, hey, this um, this thing, you, you hit the right number, and you get a little output from the circuit board, so you can do some type of event, you know, like do, um, uh, in this case, like a sound effects chip or an emitter or some type of message, that kind of stuff. So that's what this does. And then obviously all the reset conditions you can see um, when the target is hit, it resets the circuit. If a negative number is hit, it resets the circuit, okay? And then if something comes in on the reset pin, it resets the circuit. So that's just the error checking to make sure that your circuit doesn't get into a busted pattern. All right. So anyways. All right. So again, um, it's Intel. And uh, thanks for, uh, for checking out this video. And the invention is called uh, Cheap Password. And I uh, hope you check it out in the invention store and you enjoy it. And it helps you make some really cool rooms. And you can find some awesome uses for that extra 2% ink that you get saved. So all right. Have a good one.